I've argued in many videos that there is no room for hope in the healing process, but I've been thinking about this and I think I might just have changed my mind. I've often said that when we're in a toxic situation and we have no credible reason for things to improve, but we hope that they will improve, this is opium addiction, this is toxic. However, there is another place in the healing process where hope does have a role where hope is helpful and hope might even be necessary. And if we don't see this, we might just miss out and we might be stagnating for no valid reason. I'd like to run you through this logic, see if I can change your mind, and I'd love to hear what you think about this in the comments. Hopium addiction is what happens when we hope that a terrible situation will magically become acceptable, but we have no real tangible reason for believing it is likely to be the case. For instance, we know that when we observe a hundred narcissists and we see how many of them change, the percentage is pretty much close to zero. Or as others might say, it's nearly 1%, nearly one, but if it's not 1%, it's 0%. It pretty much never happens. However, when we are in relationships with narcissists, it can be unbelievably difficult and complicated to step out of the relationship and move on to something else. And one of the reasons why is because we are addicted to hopium. It's difficult to just accept reality. It's difficult to give up hope when we hope that things are going to work out. In a previous video, I'd mentioned there's a good reason why things don't change, and that is simply because narcissists are very happy with the current situation. It is working out for them, and any change will simply reduce the quantity of positive things for them and increase the quantity of positive things for us. But they don't care about that. They don't have much empathy, and they look for win-lose situations. They have to win and if other people lose, it really doesn't matter. Whereas most of us will look for win-win situations. We're willing to give something up so others have something better if they have reciprocity. Or some of us actually are willing to give something up, expecting something in return. And when we're dealing with a toxic person, they are simply gaming this expectation of reciprocity. Now, the reason why I think something is missing here is because it's simply focusing on a current toxic situation that is not working out. And I would suggest that if we take the current situation and we assume nothing changes, well, why would anything improve in the future? And until we have a good reason why, maybe it's safer to assume that nothing will be changing in the future. Now, let's imagine that we do change something in the future. Let's assume that we remove the toxic element from the situation. So imagine that you have an ecosystem, that your life is like an ecosystem. It's like a pond with frogs, with little goldfish, with some water lilies, with fireflies, and someone comes and dumps a bucket of human waste into your pond. Well, what happens? You have a pond that is being polluted. You know what the source of the pollution is, and if nothing changes and the person shows up three times a day to dump human waste into your pond, well, you're pretty sure that the pond is going to stay polluted. Now, you've got a few possibilities. You can hope that the pond adapts and the stuff that is killing the pond all of a sudden becomes a source of nutrition, but then you need a valid reason why that would happen. Or you consider that maybe the person who shows up three times a day systematically to dump human waste into your pond might for some reason stop doing it. Well, it might be the case, but you need a valid reason to assume that the stuff that functions systematically will stop or will change in the future. And the third possibility is you figure out how to block the pollution, which means being willing to remove the source of the pollution. Of course, when you do that, you change the system, and that can become pretty scary because it looks different. But let's imagine, project yourself in the future. You have your pond, there is you, and there is no more source of pollution. You won't be certain that things are going to work out, of course, but now let's just think in terms of responsibility. I suggest that we nearly never have 100% responsibility on the situation, and we nearly never have exactly 0% responsibility on the situation. The situation with the pond is not 100% yours, but it's not 0% either. If you do everything that is in your capacity to improve things, so 100% of that which is your responsibility, then everything else that's remaining that you can't control, that is where hope comes in. That is where trust comes in. If you do everything you can to make things work out, then it's okay to hope 
and to trust. So with the hopium, I suggest instead of being addicted to hopium to stay in a toxic situation, take a step back, observe the two situations, weigh the pros and the cons of both. See what you can change. How can you go from the toxic situation to the less toxic or healthier situation? What does that look like? And once you have actually decided what it looks like, how you can increase the probability it works out, maybe that is where you need hope. Maybe when you get to that point, you can then say, I don't know if this is going to work out, and I hope it will. It seems plausible it will. It seems credible that it will. This, of course, will involve anticipating all of the dangers and problems that can occur. It will be anticipating how much damage the toxic person can do. It will be putting together strategies to reduce and minimize the damage and having a few plans of how to move forward. How can you get them out and minimize the damage? How can you extract yourself from a situation and minimize the damage? That requires some planning that requires some strategic thinking. But first and foremost, that also requires being open to the possibility of this maybe being a future scenario for you. You don't know if it's going to work out, but until you look at what this actually would look like, you don't know what options are there. Maybe you also need a little bit of trust and faith and hope that a better future is possible if you do what you can do to extract yourself from this situation. Remember, the alternative is simply a crappy situation, potentially slightly better managed, so you can minimize the damage it's doing to you. But minimizing or mitigating damage is not the same thing as building a happy, healthy life that actually suits you and works for you. When we're stuck in these situations, it can be really tough to extract ourselves from the situation and see all the options that we have. But that is one of the first steps. Take a step back and think, what is working for you? What do you like? What don't you like? And remember that it's always possible to extract ourselves from a situation. It's never cost free. However, if we're willing to bear the cost, it is possible to do that. But here think, you have hope that you can invest into one of two situations. In one situation, you have the near certainty it is impossible for you to be happy. So you can hope that it will work even though you know it's nearly impossible. In the other situation, you know it is possible for you to be happy because you've removed the biggest source of pollution. You don't have the certainty it's going to work, but you can choose to put your hope on one of the two to either motivate you to change nothing and stay and see what happens. And in principle, you can predict what is going to happen. So if you want to do that, well, maybe you just need to anticipate and predict. And in the other possibility, you can decide that you will invest your hope into that. So you can then start exploring in your mind and then maybe on paper if you can do it, but start exploring what that would look like and see if that is more like the life that you would like to have. You will not have the certainty it's going to work out, of course, but you can start exploring safely, you can start anticipating safely, and you can use hope to motivate you to first of all explore, and once you actually have a scenario that seems credible, where you think this might actually work out, you will not be 100% certain, but maybe when it's time to actually take the jump, to make the change, to take a risk that is calculated, maybe that is the right time for you to have healthy 